All right, and we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game. So first and foremost, we've got our handy-dandy rule booklet. It's one page, double-sided, realistically. There's a couple pictures here and there, but nothing that's actually that useful. And it's okay. It, I wish it was a little bit clearer on how the uh, the guessing worked, in particular when you guess a location and a person and a, a spell, uh, whether or not. It doesn't really tell you if everyone's supposed to give you information that they have it or if only one person is. I'm assuming it's only one person, but that should be specified in the rules. We played it as one person. But anywho, still a very simple game, and I can teach you how to play right now. So in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game. Uh, let's let's not beat around the bush here. I'm not going to call it that anymore. This is Harry Potter Clue. There's there's no there's no <laughs> there's no question about it. So what you're going to be doing is you are going to try and figure out uh, what is behind Fluffy, and Fluffy is going to be right up there, the three-headed dog from the book. And inside of Fluffy, there are going to be three things. There's going to be three of these blue cards. There's going to be a person who committed the crime, who cast the spell. There's going to be a spell or potion that they used and where they did this. So essentially, you were trying to find where the crime happened, who did the crime, and how they did the crime. Yeah, it sounds a lot like Clue, that's because it is. So all of this is going to be secretly done at the beginning of the game, and then you're going to shuffle up the remainder of these blue cards. As you can see, they got some artwork. Uh, some of them also don't have artwork, which is kind of bizarre why they decided not to do that. It's like, okay, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe because they're bad. They did Crabba and Draco Malfoy, but I, I, I have no idea why they did that. But then Goyle, apparently he's good because he's got a picture. I don't know. It's kind of odd. But you're going to shuffle these up and you're going to deal them out evenly to everyone at the table. So you have a big old stack of these. Everybody else will have a big old stack of these. And then every player is going to get a pad that looks like this. It's going to have all the characters that might have potentially committed the crime. It's going to have all the things, the tools they could have used, and the locations. And you guessed it, you were going to mark off every card that you have in hand secretly on your pads. Because obviously you don't want other people seeing your pad. You're going to pick a color, and you're going to start your color, which is a sorting hat that actually looks really stinking nice, and you're going to start in this middle spot right here. Now over here, there's going to be the ghost, who is going to be moving around at nighttime, making sure no kitties are in the hallway, which is actually kind of thematic, and I actually do really like that part, that they were able to work that in thematically. Because if the ghost runs into you, uh, you will get bumped back to this spot, and something else bad will happen. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So what you're going to be doing is you're we're going to be rolling these d6 dice right here and you're going to be moving into various different locations around the school in order to uh, gather information about who committed the crime, where it was committed, and what was committed. So you're going to do that by rolling these two dice. Now, these are standard d6 dice except for the fact there are no ones, which is a good thing, and there's this symbol instead, the Hogwarts symbol right there. Now, if you roll one or two of these Hogwarts symbols, it doesn't matter, one or two, you are going to draw one of these green cards. Not these green cards, which are included with the game, that just tell you a little bit about the game. I'm not quite sure why those are included, but these cards right here. And these cards will do a variety of different things. Uh, some of them will have secret passages that you'll be able to find as you sneak through the night, which actually really works thematically, which is kind of cool. Uh, somebody put some thought on this, and as you'll see, this one has the, the footprint, so you'd put it over here by uh, actually, you put it right over here. It's actually kind of hard to find it sometime. But as you can see, there's outlines for where the cards should go right here. So this one would go right here. And just like that, now you can walk through this secret passage and come right out on the other blue pair of footsteps, which is right here. So you can go from downstairs to upstairs. Because normally you have to take the stairs to go from downstairs to upstairs. So them, so some of them are going to be secret passages or ways you'll be able to get across. So like this one goes right here and it's going to allow you to go from here to all the way over there. Uh, some of them are special one-time use special abilities. So for instance this one, player of your choice must show you their spell cards. So you're going to pick somebody and they have to show you all of their spell cards. Player of your choice must show you all their character cards. And there's another one which is all their location cards. Uh, the Hagrid, which allows you to switch places with any player on the board. And then one, which kind of seems odd, but there's only one invisibility cloak, which isn't clearly specified exactly what it does, but it's you're protected throughout the game from all ghostly attacks. So everything else is one-time use, or just not even something that you're going to use, just a passage you find. Um, 
but this one is actually something that you'll put in front of you, and it's going to allow players to pass through the ghost uh, when they're holding this card. So you're going to have that card, and there's no way to lose that card as well. Now, I'm not sure if that means you can walk through the ghost, which I know you can, or if the ghost can't get you at all, which is what I, would make sense thematically. Either way, as you can see, that's clearly an overpowered card. But let's show you exactly how the game works, and let's get out of here. So, what you're going to do on your turn is you're going to roll these two d6 dice, and this is a roll and move game. Now, uh, this is a bad example. We'll say I have a 4 and a 4. So, since I have a 4 and a 4, that means I can either move 8, my character 8 spaces, or I can move my character 4 spaces, and the ghost 4 spaces. So, uh, what you do with the dice is either move yourself or move the ghost, or move both. So let's see, am I within four spaces? Yeah. So I might go one, two, three, four, and I would go to the library. And since now I am in the library, what I can do is I can make a prediction, uh, I can make an accusation, so to speak, in the library. So I would say, uh, it has to be in the library, so I'd say, in the library, because that's where I am, uh, I think Harry Potter conjured the forgetfulness potion. So. And this isn't actually specified in the rules, but I'm pretty sure this is how you play. Starting with the player on your left, they look through their hand and they see if they have the library or if they have Harry Potter or if they have the forgetfulness potion. In this case, they they don't. So they would say, pass. And now the next player, they would look at their hand and they would see if they had Harry Potter, the library, or the forgetfulness potion. So they actually have Harry Potter and we're going to pretend like they also have the library even though they don't. They are going to hand you one of those cards. So they would slide me this card, for instance, and say, oh, Harry Potter. Well, I'm not, nobody's going to say it. But now I would mark Harry Potter off my suspects list. So I no longer am going to guess Harry Potter because I know he did not commit the crime. He's not back there behind Fluffy. Now, when you move spaces with one die, that ends your movement. But what you can do in this game, since I use this four to get in there, is you can use the other four to quickly go one, two, and go right back into the library and make another accusation. And then next turn, I might just go, uh, you know, one, two, three, and go right back into the library and make another accusation. Uh, well, until somebody gives me the library, at least. But eventually what's going to happen is you're going to think you know what three characters are behind Fluffy up here. Once you get to that point, you're going to try and get all the way up there, and then you can make an accusation. If your accusation is incorrect, you look at the cards, you're out of the game. You give all your cards evenly to the rest of the players, and then you proceed onward. If you're correct, then hooray, you've won the game. Now let's talk about the ghost, because that's the last aspect of the game I have not talked about. So, when you move the ghost, how it works is, uh, you can move the ghost, and you can move diagonally in this game. That is something that I'd want to mention. Uh, if you make the ghost run into someone, so let's say one, two, three, four, and I ran into this purple guy, the purple guy goes back to the middle part, no matter where he is. So let's just say he's right here and I run into him, boom. He goes back to the middle part right here, and the purple guy has to show me a card of my choice. Uh, and that's, you know, obviously, so that's really incentive to move the ghost. But anywho, once someone has successfully gotten whoever is behind Fluffy, they will be the winner of the game, and that, in a nutshell, is how you're going to play Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited for checking out Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game from Mattel. This is for ages 8 to adult. For two to six players, it take about, I don't know, about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game, you are going to be taking control of a sorting hat for some reason. And you're going to be going around the castle at Hogwarts trying to figure out who committed a terrible crime and with what weapon they committed that crime. That sounds like another game. Oh yeah, this is Harry Potter Clue. They pretty much just took Clue, but then shoved Harry Potter into there. But they also tried to make some unique aspects into this game. They shoved in some interesting mechanisms, but do those mechanisms work? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. All right, then. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts Game, a.k.a. Harry Potter Clue. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the pro side, uh, you can tell that this was... A labor of love for someone who created this game. This does not feel like a cheap cash-in, which was what I was expecting. So I was very pleasantly surprised 
when thematically a lot of stuff in this game really works well like the fact that the ghost is going around and once the ghost finds you you get bumped back to normally you get bumped back to your bedroom but you get bumped back to the middle of the board that makes sense thematically i like the fact that when you get those green cards you're finding different passageways or maybe you have uh the uh, the invisibility cloak even though the invisibility cloak is completely op which i'll talk a little bit about later overpowered by the way um that's still really cool there was a lot of time and effort put into this game and the mechanisms in this game and adding enough different things into this game to not make it feel like it's just a clue ripoff also uh you know the castle does look really cool um you know it does i mean you look at the board and you're like oh that's a cool looking castle it does look a little bit busy and a little bit cluttered but if you're a harry potter fan i think you will get a kick of the art design in this game aside from maybe how the people look you know i'm just so used to the movies and seeing the pe characters in the movies the, the, the pictures kind of threw me off in this game but that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing uh it goes up to six players so it's got a very nice player count it is based off the clue system so people will a lot of people will instantly know how to play this game and you'll just have to teach them the new rules which is nice it's also going to make it more accessible for you know people who might not play games you'll be like oh no it's just like clue but there's some harry potter cool stuff and that might just you know get them into the game a little bit easier so the theme comes across that's what i'm trying to say here despite the fact you know maybe harry potter might have committed the crime and that doesn't make much sense the, the theme they tried to make it come across and it does come across pretty well that's what I got on the pro side, though. Unfortunately, on the con side, I can't recommend this game. And it actually makes me question how much I enjoy Clue, to be brutally honest with you. Because I have fond memories of Clue. And then I was playing this game, and I played it a couple times, and I thought about it. And I was like, I haven't played Clue in years. I wonder if that game sucks. Because this game, it's just not that good. And a lot of the problem is the new stuff they added to the game. Which, thematically, is really cool. And it's a really neat idea. And I feel like they spent a lot of time trying to figure out what they were going to put into this game, but not nearly enough time actually playtesting the game. Because there's a lot of problems with this game. So first and foremost, th the green cards and the Harry Potter cards, while being a very cool idea, are just not that neat. Because if you roll two Harry Potters on your turn, you know what's going to happen? You're going to set up a secret passageway or something, and then your turn's over. And that's not a very fun turn. And you want to have fun turns. Also, it's a roll-and-move game, which obviously roll-and-move games are roll-and-move games, and most people hate roll-and-move games. But since it's a clue variant, I don't have that big of a problem with the roll-and-move. And they even tried to fix the roll-and-move a little bit by getting rid of the ones. So now, hooray, there's no ones. Instead, you get to draw a card, which potentially isn't going to do anything for you. Because while it's cool that, that you're setting out a secret passageway, it's not like you're actually at that secret passageway. You might be completely across the school, which means it's like, okay, it's neat. I found a secret passageway that someone else is going to use. Whatever. Uh, that's a little bit of a bummer. Also, I don't like the fact that you can just go in and out of locations. And that feels a little bit busted. But it, it says you can do it in the rules. Because it's like, if you're... I'll give you an example. And this is actually how I won one of the games that I played. I was in the library, and that was the first place I went. I went first, and I went into the library with my role, and then I immediately made a prediction. And I got a card. You know, somebody's like, oh, this, this isn't right. Here's the card. And I said, cool. And then I used the rest of my, my other role, and I went immediately back into the library. And I made another guess, and I got another card. And I did that, like, five times. And I realized that, hey, the library is the spot of the murder. I had just dumb luck into that. But here's the thing you're just going to keep going back into that location over and over and over and over again until someone disproves that location, which means that there's a way to play. There is a best way to play the game, which is you always should give a location card because then they have to go to somewhere different. And I don't like that. I think that's... Uh, I just was not a fan of how that worked. Also, the Invisibility Cloak is a really cool idea. But here's the thing, you need more than one special persistent ability. It's like, oh, you got the invisibility cloak? Good for you. You can go through the ghost and the ghost can't mess with you anymore. Oh, I got this card? I set up a secret passageway. Oh, I got this card? You have to show me all this one time. It's just, I don't know, it felt like it was rushed out almost. Like, I wanted more green cards in the game. And I understand that they didn't want to have too many green cards because they wanted to have those passageways set up probably because... Without that, you can't even get 
to the, um, you can't even get to Fluffy, which is another comment I have in this game. Uh, if you are not rolling the Hogwarts symbols, which most likely you will be, uh, you can't get to Fluffy. There's no way to get there until you unlock some of the secret passageways, uh, which is just dumb and not, not a great game design choice. I played it with my class. They were, they enjoyed it, but they said they liked Clue better. The two girls that I played it with had played Clue recently, and they told me that they still like Clue better than this game, despite the fact that both those girls absolutely adored Harry Potter. And that's really all you need to know right there. The target market who loves Harry Potter liked the original version of this game, Clue, better than this game, despite the game is thematically Harry Potter. And that, you just can't do that. No. That'd be like if I had Munchkin over here and then I had Harry Potter Munchkin over here and he gave Harry Potter Munchkin to a bunch of diehard Harry Potter fans are like, oh my gosh! We, we kind of like the original Munchkin better. That means that your game is not doing your job. So Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery at Hogwarts game, a very big missed opportunity. This is such a bummer to me. I was really hoping, and when I started playing this, I was really hoping this was a game I was going to keep, and this was going to be the clue game that I had in my classroom to play with the kids, because kids love Harry Potter, I love Harry Potter, and if this had more special abilities, if it had more Harry Potter theme, if some of the rules were a little bit more streamlined, this could be a real winner. This could be one of those hidden gems, but as it stands now, while someone put a lot of effort into this, it's still, I'm not going to call it a mass market piece of crap, but it is a mass market game that, while not bad, is still kind of a piece of crap. So it's kind of a mass market piece of crap. So it's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Mystery and Hogwarts game, an unfortunate miss on what could have potentially been a great clue uh, ripoff of Harry Potter. So that is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, blah, 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 the name of the game. If you enjoyed this video, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know. Harry Potter game. What game would you like to see reskinned in the Harry Potter universe? Uh, the obvious choice for me is Twilight Imperium, but I say that about everything. I want Twilight Imperium Kirby and Twilight Imperium Legend of Zelda and Twilight Imperium, I don't know, uh, Powderpuff Kids. I, I don't really care. I just, I just want that. So I'm going to give you a different game. What game would be great as a Harry Potter game? I'm actually going to say King of Tokyo. I think a King of Tokyo Harry Potter version would be really stinking cool. Or maybe you're playing as, um, maybe you're part of Voldemort's evil army and you were acquiring skills to become the most powerful evil wizard and become Lord Voldemort's right-hand man. I think that would be a really cool, still them thematically connected Oh my god, I want Harry Potter, King of Tokyo. I don't know what you'd call that, King of Voldemort or something like that, but man, that would be really sticking cool. But let me know in the comments below, what game would you like to see themed to Harry Potter? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.